moving, changing directions in the building, I have the lovely Gabe Bolton. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to be asking you a few questions to get to know you as well as my listeners. So let's start by saying your year coaching here. What year? I am going into my eighth year. Your eighth year. And did you participate in soccer in college? I uh, went to uh, UC Davis. I actually played golf uh, for a couple <laughs> of years in college, but played soccer my entire life. So what would you say, how did you become um, the girls soccer here, girls soccer coach here at CSU Stanislaus? You know, I grew up uh, traveling all over the world and really enjoyed soccer and played my um, all my youth life and um, really enjoyed the game and got into coaching uh, when I was uh, in college and started coaching little nine and ten year olds and um, from there we all of a sudden was coaching club soccer, then high school, then junior college, and then here at Stanislaus at the University of Utah. So I just kind of followed a uh, you know career path and uh, never thought this was what I would be doing, but I just, <laughs> I'm blessed to have, I think, the most amazing job. It's funny how just things like fall into place. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It really is. Okay, so taking it back, you guys won the CCA champs. Don't CCAA championship, is that correct? Yep, last year. It was a good year. So can you explain the feeling you felt when you your team finished the game against Chico to win that championship? Uh, well, it's I mean it's pretty incredible. It, it was a very special team, amazing group of women that work exceptionally hard and um, it was just a great it was just a great feeling. It's it, it's actually hard to put into words and thinking back on it just the um, passion that the women on the team put into the season and all the work they've put in and really the work that a lot of people have put in um, for many many years for us to just to get to that point the alumni that came before uh, you know have put in tons of hours to get us to where we were and, and our seniors on that team Marissa Dunaway and Liz Scher and Vanessa Cervantes were just incredible leaders and, and women and, and students and people and and so it just was a really a kind of a culmination of a lot of hard work by a lot of people for many years. Yeah. Small world, I went to high school with Vanessa Cervantes and she tore it up oh, at St. Yeah. Mary's. St. Mary's, yeah. So shout out to you, Vanessa Cervantes. So how many girls do you have on the team? Yeah, you know, we have um, we have 34 on the team. It's a pretty uh, big wow. squad, but they, they have fantastic uh, chemistry and they work really hard together and, and they really play for each other. It's one of our team. Um, philosophies and mottos that we play for each other. So no matter who's on the field, uh, it's a success um, for everybody. A win's a win for everybody, and a loss is felt by everybody. And and we work uh, for each other, and we play for each other. So it's a really, it's a really special group of women. And we have five phenomenal seniors this year, and and they've really set the tone for what it means to be a warrior and to do things uh, the warrior way. Yeah. So with last year's season, you know, those are some pretty high standards to meet moving forward to this season. What are some of your team goals for the girls this season? Well, you know, our goal always is to win a national championship. And that's um, the one goal that we set out for ourselves, uh, for our program. Um, but then we kind of break things down in, in, into smaller pieces, smaller segments. And so, you know, right now I would say that our goals are to just continue to improve every day, uh, to kind of live uh, and play in the moment, not to get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, I think this last weekend was a really great example. We, we played on Friday night against Dominguez Hill, which is a good program, and played really well for about 75 minutes and then had about a five minute, seven minute period where we, um, where we struggled. And um, we didn't let that, even though we lost the game, we didn't let it get, us, get ourselves too down, bounce back against a really good team, LA, on, on Sunday and really, um, really beat them pretty, um, pretty easily and pretty handily. Uh, four to one. So, you know, right now we're just trying to improve every day and uh, keep working hard and and do the things that, um, you know, in practice and in games that just help us get to where we want to be. So practice leading on to my next question for you. Um, how often do you practice and what is a typical practice like for your team that you organize? You know, it depends. Um, we're usually practicing um, four days a week, we have two games a week, and then we have uh, one day off a week. Um, so usually we practice on, uh, we have Tuesdays off. So we practice Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Saturday. And then we have games on Fridays and Sundays. So that's usually the, uh, the schedule. And um, 
you know, practices just depends on kind of the day, whether it's a light day or a little bit harder day. And, uh, but the, the focus is always, you know, the same. Let's, um, let's improve and, and let's get better as a team. Right. So, so, for, so far, what has been your biggest challenge as a coach for this team? Um, I just try not to mess things up. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the main thing that I try not to do. Um, you try and keep everybody composed on the same page. No, I try and stay composed. They're fine. You know? um, oh, it's you. Yeah, it's me. Uh, yeah, no, I try to get out of their way and, and uh, let them do their thing. Um, you know, I think um, I can't really I can't really point to to anything because we just have we just have really good players and good people and they are amazing teammates. So they make my job really really easy and. Um, I try to, you know, facilitate some of the success and, um, you know, point out options and, and things that um, I think will be will work. And um, but you know, soccer is kind of one of those games. It's not a coach-centered game. You know, it's a it's a player game. Right. And the players have to go out and play it. And you know, I try and put them in the right positions and put the right mix of players on the field. And then I just try and get out of the way and let them do their thing. Right. Great. So, how do you, okay, we're talking about composure and you, how do you motivate the team when um, they just, um, when they lose a match? Um, that's a good question. I, uh, you know, for me, I think that we try and keep everything in perspective. And we try not to get too high um, when we win and too low when we lose. And we just kind of try and stay on an even uh, an even keel, and um, we focus on little goals within the game, um, things that we want to do, execute, whether it's keeping possession of the ball or sh getting shots on goal or getting crosses into the box, just things that in our performance, and if we can execute things in our performance well, uh, then the score will take care of itself. We rarely talk about winning or losing. We focus more on how we're performing, and if we're performing well, uh, then you know the rest of it will kind of take care of uh, take care of itself. And then I have five seniors who, you know, two of them have been here for five years. Millie Brown, our goalie, and and Elisa Barlow, our defensive mid. They've been here five years now, wow. and so uh, they're just phenomenal leaders. And and Sierra Cassis, one of our center backs, I've coached since she was nine years old. And um, Alexia, I've coached since she was uh, thirteen. Um, wow. And so, uh, and Bernie Bencourt, our, our other senior, is a, a midfielder, and she's a player that walked onto our program and has started every moment she's been here, and just an amazing uh, student and, and soccer player. And, and so, you know, all you have to do is look at our seniors um, if you're another player on the team and you need some motivation, and they're also the ones that really motivate their teammates to be successful because we want to win for them, we want to be successful. Uh, for them, this is their last. Uh, this is their last chance, and we want to send them out on top. So, you know, I think it's a combination of things, um, and, and we try and uh, on a daily basis motivate them to get better. But um, you know, it's uh, kind of motivating. Kind of falls on a lot of different people. Right. Definitely want to send those seniors out with a bang with their last year. For sure. So moving forward, um, academics, as you know, are always important to strive among athletes. Um, can you tell us your ways of making sure the girls stay on the right track as far as with grades and um, completing their degrees? Do you have certain requirements like study hall or what do you, what is yeah, your... Yeah, we, we um, well, we've been really uh, fortunate that we have a culture on our team that uh, our, our student athletes are really committed to their academics. You know, they, they posted a 3.4 team GPA last year, wow. and um, that's the they've won, I think, five or six national team academic awards um, over the last uh, seven years. So it's a good it's a good culture to begin with, you know. And then we have an amazing assistant coach Jenny Rosenberg who runs our operation and graduation program, and basically the uh, focus of that is to keep everybody on track so um, they meet with us on a weekly basis uh, their freshman year they um, we have certain um, uh, requirements throughout the year they keep a scorecard 
of all their assignments and their grades and they um, calendar everything and so we do a fair number of things to um, keep our team on track but really you know at the end of the day we just have really amazing students on our team and they're just uh, they're self-motivated and, and we help out a little bit and kind of provide a little guidance and structure at times but it's really um, it's Jenny and it's them doing the hard work that really um, makes it happen. That's great to hear. You know, as you know, academics, education, having a degree can take you so far, and a sport can only take you so far. Yeah. So, um, can you describe some of the experiences you've had with the soccer team over the years you've been here? Oh my God, <laughs> that is a loaded question. Um, or well, some of the biggest ones you've had. You know, we just got back from Canada, and um, oh, I saw that. How was our, that? It was awesome. Um, and um, we, uh, so we went up there, we played uh, Simon Fraser University, and uh, which uh, our former athletic director, Milton Richards, is now the athletic director um, at Simon Fraser. And so it was a great opportunity. And oh, wow. about 60% of our team had never traveled internationally before. So just, you know, getting across the border <laughs> with our passports and trying not to say anything dumb at the border when the <laughs> border patrol is on your bus, you know, that was. Um, and we, you know, we, we almost accomplished it. I mean, we got across the border. We did say a couple dumb things, but um, we, we still got across. Um, How was that traveling with 34 girls? Well, we, we uh, didn't, didn't quite travel that many, but um, it, it was great. They, they, they were very easy to travel with. But, um, and then we went to, a, um, we went to this uh, Capilano suspension bridge, which is like this ridiculous bridge that is just basically suspended in air over like a 300 but um, cavernous, um, you know, hole that drops down to a river, and for some reason, people think it's really cool to walk across <laughs> it. Um, I did not think it was that cool to walk across it, mostly because I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> um, the team thought it was really funny to record me crossing it, or mock me, or imitate me um, crossing the bridge, um, which is readily available on YouTube. Um, if you're ever there, please bend your knees. It really makes crossing the bridge uh, more, uh, a little bit easier. Um, but you know every uh, you know there's a lot of memories with the team and a lot of things. But honestly, every day we have um, we have a lot of characters on our team. Maybe like too many characters, <laughs> but they make every day uh, pretty enjoyable and um, pretty uh, fun to be uh, around them. So yeah, that sounds like a wonderful and fun team to be around. Yeah. Do you have any advice for upcoming soccer players looking to play at the collegiate level? Well, if you're really talented, you should come to Cal State Stanislaus. <laughs> um, that's my number one advice. Of course. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Um, that was probably an NCAA violation right there. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, you know, I think, um, I think what gets uh, players um, to this level is uh, their love for the game. Yeah. So have fun, enjoy it, work hard. Um, but at the end of the day, just remember, you know, it's, it's just a game, you know. Yeah. Do you have any, um, um, you have games coming up, correct? We do, we do. Go ahead and tell my listeners about them and how All you right. guys have prepared for them. Uh, well, um, Friday night we are playing uh, Cal State East Bay and um, ASI is trying to break the record, um, the attendance record for Friday night. So that's, It's a home game. It's a home game, yep. We kick off at 4.30 and then the men uh, kick off at 7 uh, p.m. So... Uh, fans should definitely come out and see um, see both of those games. Uh, and then Sunday is Youth Soccer Day. Uh, speaking of upcoming soccer players, all youth soccer players that wear their uniform get into the game for free. And um, our kickoff is at 11.30 and the men play uh, two and both both games are free if you wear your um, soccer uniform. So, awesome. Um, yeah, and we play Monterey Bay on, on Sunday. So it should be uh, two really good games against uh, some good teams. All right, well, let's wrap this up. I'd like to take the time to thank you for coming to the radio station and chit-chatting with me about the soccer team. I wish you and your team the best of luck this season. Thank you. And that's it. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you.